In part four of this overview, we will provide you with an example of how the cause of death digital data package can be modified to be used in a live country system. We will perform the following tasks as part of this demo. We will review how the cause of death tracker registration form has been modified. We will also review how cause of death data entry has been modified. Lastly, we will also review how the cause of death rules and coding have been modified. We have had some brief discussion on how these modules act as a starting point for countries that can then take these starting points and customize them to fit their local needs. Let's take a look at an example of this type of customization, where the small cause of death digital data package was used initially, but customized into something that fits a specific country's context. Let's start with the registration page. In the example we previously discussed, there was only one piece of registering information, a system-generated unique ID. We can see this has been changed quite a bit in this country's implementation, with a number of details being collected at the time of registration. This cause of death program also links to a death notification and verbal autopsy program. And the selected information here was outlined in order to link this with the civil registration process as well. Therefore, we see a number of additional details that the country has selected to include during registration. Let's save this individual's details and review the data entry form. There are a number of differences between the standard digital data package and what has been implemented in the country. This is a result of reviewing local procedures and tools, as we briefly covered when defining use cases in one of the previous modules. The sections on surgery, manner of death, and fetal or infant death have been removed, while the section on maternal deaths has been modified significantly. The main section on medical data is largely similar, however. There have been some additions to this section, as each line is now coded using the full ICD-10 code. The process of selecting the underlying cause of death is also a bit different. This is located in a revised results section. You may have noticed already, but there is no reference to small in this version of the tool, as this country has decided to implement the full ICD-10 list of terms and codes instead. Only the ICD-10 code is available in the results section. Some of the biggest advantages to the initial design have been retained or modified in a way that would allow this country to utilize some of the most useful features discussed in the original digital data package that was demonstrated. In particular, the linking of medical terms to ICD-10 codes was a key piece of the original package that the country has retained and used in its own design. As part of this use case, a large advantage would be the ability to produce detailed analysis on cause of death data. This includes being able to identify and rank top causes of death, perform detailed analyses by various age and sex groupings, and understand root underlying causes related to maternal deaths, as an example. This is the type of information that would be covered in more advanced content, and it is encouraged that you consider additional training if this topic interests you, as this is out of scope of this particular online course. We hope that the overview of this use case has given you an idea of potential real-life examples of using Tracker to capture patient-level data. We know that this has been a very brief introduction to these concepts. However, we will make sure to discuss where you can access additional resources and review additional learning pathways if you are interested in learning more about advanced use cases and tracker functionality.
In this module, we learned about DHIS2 digital data packages. In particular, we reviewed an example of one of the tracker packages focusing on cause of death. As a review, DHIS2 digital data packages are meant to promote standards and provide a starting point or reference for program configurations, include DHIS2 installation files, as well as guidelines and exercises for use of the data that is produced by these packages, have different installation files, including dashboard-only packages, complete aggregate packages, and complete tracker packages that include data entry forms, validation rules, as well as analyses outputs. And finally, that these DHIS2 digital packages can be customized to fit local requirements as required. We reviewed a specific example of the cause of death program being localized to fit a specific country's needs. This type of customization is encouraged as the packages act as a starting point that countries can use as a reference. This is a new concept that is gaining more traction and it is a good place to start if you are thinking of reviewing or implementing one of the available programs in DHIS2. Please do not hesitate to contact us on the discussion board if there are any further questions about the DHIS2 digital data packages.